Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah. Today we're going to be talking about a few Bible resources, Bibles that you definitely need to start your Christian girl era in 2024. These Bible resources will literally help you set a great foundation to developing a long lasting relationship with God. These resources are amazing for anybody who wants to start reading their Bible and just kind of get to know God, what he's all about, what has happened, why is everybody, you know, in love with this Jesus guy? Then this is a video for you. I didn't grow up in a Christian household. We were kind of like, you know, jumping from church to church. So I have like a lot of experiences from a lot of different churches. Now life went on, etc., And I just kind of became a lukewarm Christian. I was just like, oh God, yes, I remember you. But let me go out to the bar on the weekend. It'll be completely fine. That is no longer us. Now we are looking for the best Bible resources to really strengthen our foundation in God and Christ. The first thing that you need is a great Bible study. And this is by far the best Bible study you will ever need. This has anything and everything from beginners to like intermediate. Everybody needs this Bible study. It is so easy to read. This one is in the New Living Translation. And just like from opening it up, you have like your Bible scriptures and everything. And then down here, it goes over every single scripture and it goes into detail about who, why, when, a specific word that you need to know because it matters so much. It also goes into detail about important people in the Bible. So there's Jacob, there is Abraham. And then before the chapter even starts, it gives you a huge overview of the entire book. This Bible has deepened my faith. It has really deepened my knowledge in God and in Christ. It is just an amazing resource to have. Now, this doesn't really have any area to, you know, put notes or whatever on the side. So this is the other Bible that I use that I highly recommend. I've been raving about this forever. Um, and it is this huge <laughs> illustrating Bible. This actually has a huge area here where you can put your notes down, where you can put questions down, etc. You can basically Bible journal in your Bible. And it's amazing. The only thing with this is the font is smaller. So if you're, you know, kind of hard of seeing or something, maybe this is not the greatest Bible, but if you are okay with the smaller font, I love smaller font for some odd reason. It's just more pleasing to my eye. So this worked out really, really well. Now I will have to say, this is a little more on the expensive side. I think it was like $65, you know what I'm saying? So it's definitely an investment, but it is so stinking worth it, especially if you like Bible journaling or if you want to have an area in your Bible where you can write down notes. I think this is the Christian Standard. Yep, Christian Standard Bible. This translation is also so stinking easy to read and understand as well which is something that is so important. When you begin your Bible study journey, it is so important to get a Bible that you actually understand. I know a lot of folks like to go with the King James Version because you know, that's like the most, I honestly don't know now if it's the most accurate translation, but a lot of people don't actually understand the King James Version. And it is so vital to really understand what you're reading because what is the point of reading if you're not understanding? Then you're just kind of wasting your time. So it's so, so important. And I think the Christian Standard Bible, or the New Living Translation, and I think it's the NIV, New International Version, are so easy to read. You could also have like a King James Version Bible on the side, just in case you wanna go look into it. I know that a lot of people also look into the King James Version because there are scriptures that have been taken out in other Bible translations, but that is described here. This actually, the New, Lang the New Living Translation has some scriptures, but on the study notes, it literally says like, we don't really know if this is part of it or if this is was added onto it just to fit the uh, narrative of whoever was translating it. I do have just a regular schmegler basic King James Version Bible, which is this one right here. And it works well. It's a bigger font and it doesn't have an area to journal, but it still works out super, super well. I love to have a lot of variety of Bibles because Every single one of them translates it differently and uses different words. And sometimes when you're not understanding one certain um, translation, when you look into another one, whoops, it will help you just really, really wrap your head around the scripture that you are having issues understanding. Now, if you're more of a chronological girly, I got you this game changer Bible. If you want to read the Bible in a chronological order, which is what I really, really wanted to do because I'm just like, you know, when you just read a Bible, how it's translated, it is like a lot of work to put in the puzzles together and everything. And it takes a lot of time. So this bad boy, 
is the chronological study guide. This is the new international version. What I love about this one is also the easiness to read before you start the book. So for example, let's go back to Genesis. It gives you like the archeology span and the past. It also goes through like the peoples and groups that existed in that period of time, biblical literature, and then the beginnings of human civilization. So that's all for Genesis. And it also gives you like a small review of Genesis, which is really, really nice, but it's so easy to read and it just comes with handy, little stuff on the side that just helps out so much to really understand the Bible. Chronological study Bibles, this is it. Now, what I don't recommend in terms of Bibles is Bibles directed to women or men. And let me tell you why. I watched this video, such an eye-opener. The number one reason why I will never, ever, ever, ever buy a Bible that's directed towards a woman is because of this video, because it showed the difference like the same translators, the same company and everything that translated the Bible showed the difference between the male Bible and the woman Bible. The male Bible was full with much more information that's like more logical and just like really in depth. But with the Bible for the women, it was like more emotional and there was a lot, it was a lot smaller than the men's Bible. So literally, if you need a little more information on Bibles, I would recommend watching this guy. He is amazing. The other Bible that I do have is actually the Jehovah Witnesses Bible. What is that? The New World Translation? And the number one reason why I like that one and why I do like to refer to that one here and there is because it has God's name in it. And that is something that bothers me so bad in newer translations. It's that they removed his name. And this is more because of the Jews, you know, not really wanting humans to break the commandments and using God's name in vain. So they replaced it with Lord and Lord Jesus Christ. And it's just confusing, you know, because when you see Lord, you're like, okay, Jesus Christ. No, it's Jehovah or Yahweh, whatever you want to call it. And I don't know. I just really, 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 really like having God's name in the Bible. And I honestly, if this one had God's name in it. I would rave about it for life. But the other thing that you definitely need is a Bible dictionary. I like the Unger's Bible dictionary. The number one reason why is because, okay, actually, let me go over this first. This covers from places, from people, um, like words in the Bible you don't understand, etc. This is so stinking handy to have. And it's because sometimes, you know, we can read a verse, not really understand in depth because of one word, which generally this will have it. Okay, so literally just in general, let's just turn to a random page and let's see, Lord, okay. And then it just goes down in depth into what this is and it gives you like several definitions of something. So Lord, okay, so Jehovah, this is actually a good, really good section. So anywho, Lord, and it says the rendering of several Hebrew and Greek words, which have different meanings, Jehovah or Yahweh, um, self-existent. This is used as a proper name of God and should have been retained in that form by the translators. Oh, I actually never really uh, read that section, but that's, yeah, that's what I was just talking about. <laughs> okay, so Lord, and then it goes like other stuff, like Lord is my banner, and then it goes into like what the actual translation said. I love how simple it is and how direct it is, and it also goes into deeper but not too deep to where you're like, I have no idea what in the world is going on. Everybody, I think everybody needs a commentary. So whatever type of commentary you get, you need one. Now for my beginners, I really, really like this, the Baker Illustrated Bible background commentary. And it's because it is simple, right? It's direct. It's not really in depth where you see others where it's just like, multiple chapters for one specific verse. This one is not like that. So for example, I guess, okay, this is First Chronicles 17 through 21. It like covers multiple verses in like one section here. So you can kind of see how it's not that in depth, unlike others. It's like a very handy like two in one because there are commentaries where they divide the Old Testament to the New Testament and you have to buy like both. This is also super affordable compared to other commentaries. So for my beginners, I so, so recommend this illustrated um, Bible commentary. Now, the last thing that I used in regards to like specific Bible resource is this like Bible charts, maps, and timeline thing. This is probably something you don't really need, but let me tell you, sometimes it's really, really nice and handy to have. Oh gosh, like this, Herod's Temple. It gives you, you know, I'm a visual person. So like this so helps me when I'm reading my Bible, you know, because sometimes I'll be like, I can't imagine that, you know? And it's just like images like these where I'm just like, oh my word, 
Like, this is insane. Oh, this one is my favorite, Noah's Ark. Because after this, like, I don't know really why Noah's Ark is so hard for me, like, to fathom. Like, the fact that elephants were on there, the fact that drafts were, I mean, snakes literally could have been forgotten. Like, <laughs> gross. But, you know, seeing this like this, the organization that it took, you know what I'm saying? So it's just really, really nice. If you're a visual person, highly recommend this book. And it's so like affordable as well. It even has like the genealogy of Jesus Christ, which I was like, oh my word. Like that was insane. Is it? Nope. This is a Bible timeline if you need it as well. But let me show you the genealogy of Jesus because I was like, dang, there it is. Like it goes down to each person and then there's a back. And I was like, man, oh man, like all these generations, you know, to bring Jesus Christ to us. Insane. Highly recommend all of these. I'm sure this is going to be a game changer for your Bible study. Now on the side, I also have a notebook. I have like four different notebooks. This is just like my regular smuggler, like scribble ugly into it. Like you don't even understand. I sometimes don't even understand. But this is just like when I'm reading that I'm like so focused that I don't want to lose track. I'm like, okay, ugly. And then I have another notebook where it's like nicer, you know? And what this helps me is like really remember scriptures because I do not want, I do not want to read, not understand scriptures and like kind of forget where I'm like, just like, you know, okay, sweet. Go on with my day, go on with my life. Because that's happened before. I've like sat down to read my Bible so many times and I'm like feeling it, you know, feeling the word, etc. And then I close my Bible and I'm like, so what in the world? What was that verse? What did I really read? And yeah, so writing it down for me really, really helps me out. Another thing is I do have another separate and a smaller version of a notebook. And it's like my prayer journal. For me, I personally do like to do prayer journals. I like to journal in general a lot, um, even though I will never read them again because I think it's cringy. But anywho, the best markers that I recommend for your Bible study are these one. These are so cheap. They last forever. You can literally forget to put the cap on and they will still be like new when you use it again. They are so phenomenal. I just use the regular Schmigler Sharpies when I highlight my Bible. With this Bible, it does kind of bleed through a little bit, not bad, you know, but I use Sharpies. I don't know, I feel like that's just kind of simple. If you are going into your Christian girl era in 2024, I highly recommend these. These are life changers. You know, from somebody who didn't grow up in the word, from somebody who like had to like find different things, these are probably the best that I found and it's a game changer. I know it's really, really hard to get into the Bible reading, especially when you first start because you're just like, I've read Genesis 70 times and I cannot get past it because I get bored, I forget, etc. Been there, done that. Um, and that just means you really need something with pictures more than likely. So anywho, that is all for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. I hope you guys really like give one of these a try. I so recommend it so, so, so much. But anywho, that is it for this video and I will catch you guys on the next one.